How many countries do you think tax their citizens regardless of where they live in the world? All this and more in today's video. Roll intro! Hello everybody and welcome back to Evan Edinger, the channel where Evan complains about his birth country. My name is Evan Edinger, and today, as you can tell, we are going to be complaining about my birth country. America. So semi-recently, July 15th rolled around, which for this particular year happened to be the final day to submit your US tax return to the IRS. A thing which a lot of people don't realize I have to do every single year and then some. Now I know what you might be thinking, but Evan, aren't you permanently living in the UK? Why would you still be submitting tax documents to the US government? Welcome to today's video. You see, the other day, one of you replied to one of my Insta stories, shameless plug to follow my Instagram, uh, and on my story I'd said I had finally finished filing my US tax return for the 2019 year. And one of you replied, and I quote said, well, you're nearly British now, so hopefully this is the last time. Oh, <laughs> but that would be logical, right? That'd, that'd be a logical thing, a logical thing to think. Uh, but the world of US tax law is anything but logic. There are 195 countries in this world. How many of those 195 countries do you think tax their citizens regardless of where they live in the world? I'll wait. Did you guess two? That's right, 1% of the world's countries. You already know one of them, the USA, and the other, Eritrea. No, but first, we look at Eritrea. Eritrea taxes its citizens regardless of where they live in the world at a reduced income tax rate. So it doesn't matter if you still are a resident of Eritrea or not, you do still have to pay tax to your home country. But if you've been living out of your home country of Eritrea for years and years and years and say are a resident fully permanently of another country, it doesn't really matter. If you do not pay this tax to the country that you are no longer a resident of, Eritrea can and will deny your passports confiscate all your assets in Eritrea, and even harass all your relatives. Now you might think, wow, that sounds pretty severe. Well, a lot of people actually thought that. A lot of organizations did. The UN Security Council was the first group to say, hey, that's not cool. Yeah, the UN actually passed a resolution condemning Eritrea's diaspora attack. Canada and the Netherlands have both expelled Eritrean diplomats from their country for trying to harass their citizens for this tax. And even the EU has said they're working on prohibiting Eritrea from taxing EU citizens. Now when it comes to the USA, they do all this and much, much more. But where's the outcry, you might ask? UN Security Council, are you going to, oh, you're mostly headed by the US. Oh, isn't that in a pickle right there? Is the EU working to protect their citizens from the US and this diaspora attack? Oh, they're not? Oh, they're not at all. Oh, both of these organizations basically have bent over backwards to allow the US to invade the privacy of all their citizens. Oh, how's that work? All these countries even allow the US to peep into all of your bank accounts, regardless of whether or not you're an American citizen, just to make sure that you're not an American citizen. So that's great, just to know that regardless of if you're born and raised in Deutschland, doesn't matter, the US, Uncle Sam, he's having a look, just to see, just to make sure. Is this guy American? No, he's okay. N nice cash, I like it, L nice stuff going on there. Now I know this is a lot of information I've just thrown at you all at once, so let's start at the beginning. In 2010, the Obama administration passed two incredibly important and incredibly overreaching bills. The FBAR and the FATCA. The FBAR, or Foreign Bank Account Report, requires that all Americans report when their combined foreign bank balances exceed $10,000 in the same year, even if it's the same cash. For instance, let's just say I have a UK bank account with a British equivalent of $5,000 in it. I want to open a new bank account. So I do, and I transfer the money over. Well, according to the US government, even though I only have $5,000, at one point in the year, both accounts had $5,000. And therefore, I now have to file the FBAR because I've supposedly had over $10,000. Well. What if I don't file this FBAR, you might ask? What's the worst that could happen? Especially because, you know, no one tells you to file this thing. It's not really advertised anywhere. It's just kind of a thing that you're expected to know. You get slapped with a fee. Oh, can't be that, but $10,000. $10,000 for not filing a form telling them that you have foreign bank accounts with hypothetically over $10,000, where in this example, I only had 5,000. So somehow a person that has $5,000 has to be charged 10,000. And oh, well, what if you just say civil disobedience? That's a terrible law, I agree with you. Or maybe you don't wanna pay it. Well, then they just up it. You're gonna pay it now? And so, okay, along with filing your income taxes, which are already incredibly complex and convoluted because you have to file a different system because you are a resident abroad, you now also have to file the FBAR. But also, it's time for the FATCA. By far the craziest thing about the FATCA or the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act is that it affects you even if you're not American. Which is wild. Basically, FATCA is an American bill that requires that foreign banks identify which of their customers are American and then report how much money they hold. But hold up, Evan, I'm not even American. Why should I have to worry about this at all? Well, 
Fun fact, you may have already had to do something about this. Well, actually a lot of banks, including specifically Metro Bank in the UK, now send out self-certification forms requiring all account holders to prove beyond reasonable doubt that you are not an American citizen. So even if you're UK born and bred, you'll still have to fill out a form proving that you're not American. This goes for Germans, Dutchies, and many other countries as well. In my opinion, you should be concerned that the tyrannical US government is forcing you, a citizen of your own sovereign nation, to do things it wants you to do. Especially because if you decide not to fill out this form, because you shouldn't have to, well then the banks are just gonna default you to an American status, meaning you're subject to American taxing regulations. You see, the issue is all of these non-US banks are basically being blackmailed by the US government in order to get them to comply to provide the US with all of your information. Let's just say your non-US bank actually stands up for your rights and doesn't comply with this US law of FATCA. Well, then the US Department of Treasury just slaps a 30% withholding tax on your bank. And since essentially every bank uses the US dollar for international trade, it seems that if your bank doesn't comply, they lose potentially billions and billions of dollars due to that 30% withholding tax. Or they just have to ask their citizens to do this thing the US wants them to do. Now, if you're British, you might be familiar with the concept of an ISA or an individual savings account. These things are great. Usually a really great idea to open one of these because the interest you generate on these savings account is tax free. It's usually a great way to save up for a house, save up to start a family. Well, for Americans living in the UK, uh, the meeting at the IRS went a little bit like this. We have somehow convinced American population wearing masks makes them sheep. It is amazing how stupid Hi, sir. these people- uh, These are those reports you requested of Americans holding UK ISAs. Thanks, Gus. Uh, sir, uh, what exactly are you going to do with those reports? Oh. These? Figured we could just tax them. But sir, aren't those owned by UK residents? Yep, but they still own a US passport, so we could just take their money. And the countries they live in, just let us do it. It's pretty great, Gus. Yeah, but aren't those supposed to be tax-free savings accounts? What? You mean these people aren't paying UK taxes either? Oh boy, now we're really gonna have to tax them. What are you gonna charge them? 5%? Surely no more than 10%, sir. Listen here, Gus, you little cuck. This is why we make the big bucks and you don't. We're the United States of America, the greatest country on earth. I'm fairly certain, I haven't quite left yet, but I know it in my heart, my heart of hearts, my patriot's heart. We can and we will demand that other countries' residents give us their money and they just have to suck it up and do it. But, but sir, what are you gonna charge them? I say, make it 40%. God, sir, 40%? Have you no heart? Fine. I'm feeling generous today. Make it 39.6%. Yep. If I earn over $1,000 of tax-free interest in an ISA, well, the IRS will come and take nearly $400 from me. Luckily, throwing an extra four back for a bougie meal deal. Maybe I'll finally get one of those with a smoothie. It truly is an incredibly horrible, predatory system that I cannot believe is just allowed to happen. One. I'm not even represented in Congress. As an American abroad, my needs and values do not really closely align to that of my home state. And it's not like New Jersey's really out here passing laws and regulations to make my life living out of the US that much better. In fact, the congressman from my district is quite possibly the worst in the state. If you're from New Jersey, you already know who I'm stuck with. But there are over 9 million Americans currently living abroad, which if a state would be the 11th biggest population wise. That is wild. Yet we don't really have representatives for ourselves, which to be fair, we wouldn't really need if the US would just leave us alone. We're not even living there, but yet they decide to tax us. But if they're going to tax us, we need representation. Isn't that the entire point of the Revolutionary War? Are they still teaching history in the US to anyone out there? Is that a thing? You know, no taxation without representation. Americans abroad, oh, uh, just get me. Sorry, that's British. Um, get stuffed. <laughs> get stu- I, Obviously, I've been out for this long, I can't even remember how I'm supposed to speak. But it is just a bit jokes if you think about it, that the US left the UK because they were like, we shouldn't be taxed unless we're represented. And then, they're just doing the same thing! Two, I do find it honestly troubling that the country that I do currently call my home, the United Kingdom, has decided to just allow this to happen. Because even though I'm not a UK citizen, which for the record, I very much should be at this point, but due to the whole COVID situation, my citizenship application was pushed back quite far, but 2020, I will be a UK citizen. But even if I wasn't, even if I'm just a UK resident, I would hope that the country that I'm a resident of and taxpayer of would, I don't know, try and protect me in a way and the other millions of Americans that are currently living abroad. And I know American expats living in every other country probably feel the same. Because we're migrants, our needs aren't quite considered as highly as those natively born, which you know what? Fine, I get it. I understand, okay? I know there's gonna be a lot of comments like, oh, well, you know, even from here. Sure, 
But, but I would just hope that other countries would want to stand up to the US and not just for me or for the 9 million other American citizens that are currently residing in your countries, but for the privacy of your own citizens, just allowing the US to go in and make your citizens do things they shouldn't have to do just because a bill is passed in a country leagues and leagues away. The US should not have that much control over foreign banking practices. That just should not be allowed. Now, as this will inevitably come up, as I did say I'm getting my UK citizenship soon, I'm assuming you're thinking, oh, well, why don't you just renounce your US citizenship once you get that UK citizenship if you hate this US so much? Well, after FBAR and FATCA were passed, Americans abroad started renouncing their citizenship in droves, which hasn't really seen the light of day in the media because that doesn't really fit the narrative that the US is the greatest country in the world and how could you ever leave America? No, Americans love America, especially foreign Americans. They're only there because they're just testing the waters, okay? They're just doing business, right? No, 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 De people are definitely immigrating into America and not out, definitely. No one's renouncing. Huge amounts of Americans were renouncing right after FBAR and FATCA were introduced, so the US government came up with quite a clever solution for that. Wait, Gus, why are all these Americans renouncing their citizenship this year? Well, sir, if you recall, you did agree to start doubly taxing them on their foreign earned income. That's true. And require that they fill out three to five lengthy tax documents that usually require a quite a hefty fee from an accountant that is well versed in all of our complex tax laws. I did do that. And we also agreed to slap them in the face with a $10,000 fee if they don't fill out any of these forms that they didn't really know how they had to do and we haven't really alerted them to the fact they have to do. Is that enough? So what you're saying is, they think they can just leave the greatest country on earth. Sure looks like it, sir. Oh, well, not if I can help it. I say, we raise the renunciation fee. But, but sir, our renunciation fee is already $400. Make it $2,350. Sir, that's, that's oddly specific. And also the highest in the world. Oh, oh, one more thing. Uh, make sure that they uh, can't renounce unless they've paid up all the taxes they didn't know that they owed because we never told them about any of the complex forms that they have to fill out after they move abroad. That'll be good. Oh, slot some of those $10,000 FBAR fees on them just in case they didn't fill out any of those either. That'd be great. Thanks, Gus. Sir, I'm beginning to think you're evil. <laughs> oh, just wait until they find out what happens when they try and marry a non-American. <laughs> So the US government decided to raise the renunciation fee from $400 to $2,350, because why not? They can do whatever they want. They might as well raise it to $10,000 they want, $100,000. Who's gonna stop them? Now, all American citizens will be just ball and chain for the rest of their lives. It's not that easy. And a fun fact I learned while researching this video, the US has a name and shame register put out by the Federal Register every quarter for all those naughty Americans that gave away their passport. I can't believe they do this. Let's just shame them into it. It's literally referred to as a name and shame register. Ha, I, I, I just can't believe this. And thanks to the Reid Amendment, if the government suspects that you are renouncing for tax purposes, so like literally everyone, well, they can just legally bar your entry into the country. Want to see your family? No. Want to ever do? No, you're not allowed. No. So just like Eritrea again, right? But without without all that international outcry. So though Americans abroad are renouncing their citizenship in droves, they can't legally say why. They can't legally say it's because the horrible, burdensome citizenship taxation process, including the FBAR and the FATCA, or they legally won't be able to see their families again. Wow. U.S. sounds like a great place to live, right? Man, it's no wonder people want to leave. And through this whole thing, I've not even talked about how much the double taxation really is. You know that I do have to file my IRS taxes every single year, regardless of if I owe any money, but there is a double taxation process. So not only will it be taxed, rightfully so, in the UK, the place in which I live, but the US also wants a piece of that pie. But luckily the US does have a couple agreements in place with many countries that allow Americans abroad a taxation credit of $105,900. As of 2020, this increases with inflation. Now, am I currently making over $100,000? No. Not yet, but I still do not believe it is right that if I ever get to that level, I am now going to basically never going to make over that amount because I'm going to be taxed in two countries, one of which has absolutely no right to my money. I will happily pay taxes to the UK, a country in which I genuinely love and support the services. God bless the NHS, okay? Genuinely. 10 out of 10. You know what the UK government did during COVID? They told people to stay home and they paid them 80% of their stipend. I know some people were complaining about that in the UK and I was thinking that was wild. You know what the US got? A thousand dollars once. What? So you pay all these taxes. What do you get back? 
You get war in a country you've never been, and it's not even like a smaller tax rate as well. The tax rate the US gives you on top of the already 20 and 40% that you pay in the UK specifically is 24% on top. It's just ridiculous. So I still pay taxes to a country I don't even live in, and I still have to file complex forms every single year for fear of them taking $10,000 or more from me, just taking my assets, and there's nothing I can really do about it. And I haven't even gotten to the part about what happens if I marry a lovely British woman. Absolutely lovely dinner we've had today, Dodie. It was so nice. Bit, bit weak of the wine though, wasn't it? Yeah, a little bit weak. Honestly, oh, here's yeah. the bill. Thanks, mate. Dodie, how long have we known each other? Um, known you like six, seven years, right? And have you been happy? So happy, happiest girl in the world. Dodie, would you make me the happiest boy in the world? Would you marry me? Oh my God, yes, of course, Evan. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. For us, Evan, how much does she make? I I beg your pardon? Oh, come on, man. Don't hold out on me. Uh, Dodie, you, you did say yes. Yeah, to marrying you, but not whatever this is. What, what is this? <laughs> we here at the IRS don't like it when Americans marry outside of our kind. That's why we made it so that if Evan here marries you, a non-US citizen, you either have to let us tax your entire worldwide income, or he suffers increased tax rates and fewer tax credits himself. Potentially, damning your marriage. God, no. Oh, God, no. Evan, keep your ring. Dovin is dead. No. I really wish you'd waited till after the wedding. Hi there, everyone. Evan in the edit here. So I was just adding in that source information to the video, but I decided to check out the rest of the website. It was from H&R Block, which, if you're unaware, is one of the most popular tax preparing companies in the States. And I got to the bottom of the article, and I found this uh, in complete bold letters. Just thought this was funny. Marrying a non-U.S. citizen? Get help. <laughs> and in the case in which me and my lovely British wife have a child, well, that child inherits the greatest gift on earth, US citizenship. So even though he's never literally stepped foot in the US, his 18th birthday comes around, oh, guess who comes a knocking? The US government, hey, your dad. Yeah, he was American, right? Time to pay up. Time to pay up. Oh, you didn't tell us you had over $10,000? Legally, they could take my child's money. Greatest country on earth. Greatest, greatest country on earth. My child gets money stolen from him because of where I was born. And other countries just allow this to happen. I'm honestly pleading to other countries because I do just find the US a bit of a lost cause. And I just, like I said, I, I almost feel a, a loss myself because I just want someone to stand up. I want someone to stand up for us, migrants abroad, from this horrible country known as the United States of America. And no, I don't have time in this video, which is already quite long, to even go into detail about how corruption in the US government basically made it so that tax preparing companies lobbied the US government to make it so that taxes remain difficult, cumbersome, and horrible for everyone, including people abroad and citizens, because that's just how the US government works. Money paves the way. It's depressing. And that's just the way it has been. And that's just the way it is. Tax preparing companies make a profit off of the horrible system. And so they made it so it stayed that way because they run the country. Money, money runs the US. I do wish I could end this video with a sliver of hope for any other American expats watching that maybe this system can change. But over the past couple of years, there were a couple bills that were at least you know put on the table in the House of Congress to be like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this citizenship taxation thing. Maybe we should join the entirety of the rest of the world with residency-based taxation. But these bills never really made it past the first meeting. Who really cares about Americans who left? You know, you got enough problems fighting for Americans who are still there in whatever America is at the moment. It makes sense. It's just, it's, just rough. As a start, I wish Congress would abolish FBAR and FATCA and switch to a residency-based taxation system like the rest of the modern world, but not even modern world, the rest of the world. However, due to the legislative branch of the US government just being such a gridlock mess all of the time, I just don't think that's going to happen, especially not anytime soon. So yeah, I guess if I had to sum up this video in one sentence, it'd be uh, being an American abroad, is quite taxing. So my hope is, hey, the countries in which American expats live, uh, we're looking at you. Hopefully you can stand up for us because the US sure isn't. And so I'll uh, finish with a song. Cause I'm proud to be an American in a land that's actually free. And I won't forget the men who tried to take away my money and I'll gladly stand up next to you and do nothing but think and pray. Cause there ain't no doubt, even if you're not in this land They'll repossess your money anyway Even if you live in the UK
guess that's just the U.S. way. Thanks for watching.